All right, guys, today we are taking a look at the Martini Tundra GR. It's a mouthful, so I'm probably just going to call this the Tundra GR or Tundra from here on out, but that is the full name of this little blade, and hopefully it doesn't blind you. It is a mirror-finished blade, and it is a very sunny day if you couldn't tell, so this is a definitely a bright knife. But anyways, this is, like I said, the Martini <clears throat> Tundra GR. This is the Martini Tundra GR, and for those who are unaware of who Martini is, Martini is a lot like the Finnish version of Mora. They've been making cheaper kind of, you know, Scandinavian grind, almost kind of disposable knives for things like fishing, hunting, general utility for Scandinavians. And so, like I said, that's a lot of how Mora got started, and so that's very similar to Martini. Now, the Martini Martini, so the Tundra GR itself is the kind of first foray, if you will, into high quality, serious bushcrafting knives for Martini. And uh, this blade is notably more expensive than their usual lineup, similar to how Mora's, you know, Garberg and Kunzbuhl, and those blades are notably more expensive than their, you know, companion and uh, clippers that kind of put them on the map. Now, the big benefit to the Martini Tundra is the fact that it does come with upgraded steel and most notably upgraded handle material. So let's talk about this blade and what I think about it. So first off, the blade, full disclosure, is 4116 Krupp. Now that blade steel probably sounds like a very cheap blade steel for a lot of people, but understand too that this blade is only around $100. So for those people, that uh, like, you know, Gerber's, you know, strong arms and prodigies, you know, it's very similar to that kind of 420 HC being used in knives like the LMF2 or Gerber's uh, strong arm. You know, they are more expensive blades, but the steel itself might not be quite there. And I'm not the largest fan of 416 being used on a <clears throat> over $100 knife, but at the same time too, 416 is pretty venerable. It's not a horrible steel similar to i would say 12 c27 sorry 14 c28 and sandvik steel so it's not the best but it's also not the worst and it's once again very comparable to the mora garberg in its price and its performance so or i should say the stainless garberg in that regard so in addition to that though the knife doesn't just give you that steel it is an upgrade to uh, martini's usual stainless steels but the biggest upgrade i think that really comes into this is the handle and the handle while never necessarily the end of the world or necessarily the most so the handle, um, while not necessarily a make or break feature, they do feature on the Tundra GR a curly birch handle. Now the GR, I believe designation kind of stands for like gray. So there's like two different types of curly birch that they have. I chose the gray version because it looks a little bit more rustic, a little bit less treated. Um, so it looks just a little bit more kind of like worn or kind of like, you know, uh, apocalyptic or maybe something along those lines. So looks a little less finished, a little bit more rough around the edges, but that is the GR uh, Curly Birch. Now, I will say the handle is very comfy, and uh, this blade is its definitely interesting for me because it is, you know, a little bit more expensive being about around $120, but it just seems like a very plain, very, you know, uh, run-of-the-mill, not really exciting knife. However, it does actually look good, and as you guys can see clearly by the performance, it is a pretty good performing blade. As far as the handle goes, to the only ding I'll really give it and the biggest con that I will give this knife is that the handle itself like the handle slabs where they attach to the metal or where they kind of fit to the tang the fitment isn't quite there so the handle does overlap or the handle slabs do protrude just a little bit. Now I have held this knife, carved with this knife a lot even off camera because when I initially got it I saw that and I was like is this going to be a problem? It wasn't a hot spot for me and even now still is not a hot spot whether I'm doing things like carving, you know, notching um, or feather sticking or even batoning. Um, 
it doesn't notice it's not great enough of a discrepancy to kind of register as a hot spot so for me even without gloves on uh it's not a problem it's just more of an aesthetics thing and once again this knife is like a hundred hundred twenty dollars so it's not the worst thing in the world i will say if it does bother you a lot this thing does have torx bits for its handle so you could potentially pop these scales off take a dremel to them and you know uh, make true them up but uh, for me it's not a huge deal and I'm not that concerned and so I'm just going to leave them the way they are. Now as far as the ergonomics go outside of that kind of uh, one downside I think that the knife is pretty comfortable. It is very plain Jane as you guys can see you know it doesn't have any crazy contouring. The handle slabs are flat and uh, like I said it's very minimalistic in its handle uh, design. Now for me I think that is a little bit of a turnoff because I, I gen, generally like a little bit more ergonomics to my knives than just, you know, flat slab handles. But at the same time, too, I think this knife was designed to go for a very minimalistic style where the blade itself is, you know, very just minimal. This knife is overall, you know, like a very good design. It's well designed, but at the same time, too, it's not overdone in its... Uh, you know, just very basic. So I guess it's ultimately similar in the way that the Garberg is to be a very, you know, higher, a higher quality, simple knife. You know, the Garberg itself is very similar to this where, you know, it doesn't have the most crazy contouring in the handle. It doesn't have the most wild design, but it's just a very simple, very basic, very effective knife. And so I feel that very much in this is the same way that this blade is now one thing i will say the blade design itself is very much of the lore family so your wood lures bush lures camp lures whatever you want to call them your lore styled blades and i think that that is definitely an advantage because there aren't many smaller more budget friendly stainless options for lore styled blades and i think that if you do look at this knife in that regard this is actually a pretty big winner once again the 416 isn't my favorite but the 416 is just fine it's not going to give you any issues and once again the added benefit to the 416 or 4116 i should say sorry um, is that it will be a pretty good stainless option so whether you so if you're going to be working around, you know, wet environments, um, more humid environments, wet environments, it's going to be a pretty good performer. In addition to that too, this high mirror grind is going to help prevent or act as a natural corrosion barrier. So anyways, that is the Martini Tundra GR. I like it. It's a very basic, very simple kind of knife. I'm not the largest fan of the price. I do wish it was closer to like 80 to a hundred dollars, but we'll see it what the price, where the price goes with this, because it is a brand new knife. It was just released this year. So it might be a little bit more expensive to start off with and maybe taper off. It also kind of depends as more distributors like Blade HQ, KSF, um, Blade Center get this blade, the price may also lower in that regard so who knows maybe we'll see it lower who knows maybe we'll see it raise um, a more high quality route of bushcrafting knives so whew, so anyways guys as always god bless and i'm out